Aircraft taxis in at about 7 p.m. and the returnees begin to alight. It's a total of 401 stranded Nigerians making their way back home. As usual, it's a litany of sad tales, but most of them say they just wanted a meaningful existence. When I got there, I got a job there, but the issue that Libya, they don't accommodate blacks because there's no freedom there, and they look us like commoners because we are black people there and they are light in color. So um, even though you walk in the streets, they embarrass you. You can't go outside to buy something. You can't say a word of your own because there's no gov uh, president to rule there. So everything about Libya is difficult. Libya is good, but there's no peace. There's no free movement. Libya is good. There's money in Libya. If you work, they will pay you your money. There's work, which is Arabu work. For this young man from Oyo State, it tells us how he was kidnapped on his first arrival in Libya. The voluntary repatriation was facilitated by the International Organization for Migration and the European Union with help from the Nigerian Embassy in Libya. Quite a number of state officials were present to receive their individual returnees. While the special assistant to the president on diaspora affairs, Abike Dabri Arewa, asked non-governmental organizations to rise to the help of these ones. Every African stranded there will be returned back to their homes. And as they come here, um, NGOs have been supporting, like the Future Assured Program, you know, give souvenirs. So as also the wife of the vice president who has been very supportive. And other NGOs are encouraged to do the same thing, to lend a helping hand. Everybody that is here has gone through some form of torture or the other. So hopefully they keep coming, we keep receiving them. Edo State is taking its citizens back home. Other states are encouraged to do the same thing. I've seen about 20 here from Abia. You know, so it's okay if states send their representatives so that as they come, they are profiled, you join in the rehabilitation efforts. Those that have returned to Edo State are now into farming. They are telling good stories. And you know what I tell them when they come here? Some of them are looking down and sad. I say, you are not a criminal. You're just a victim of a trafficker in search of a better life for yourself. But you know what? God has given them a second chance. A lot have died, drowned at sea. So God has given them a second chance. And they should only look at the future and what is in the future for them. She also asked the media to do more. Don't be surprised that some are still living, despite all this. Some are still be on their way because they don't get information about what is going on. They just tell them you're going to Europe and they don't know what they're going to go through. So massive awareness, and I appeal to the media, massive awareness of the dangers of uh, this kind of migration. These are the first batch of stranded Chinese tourists in Bali, Indonesia, returning home via additional flight arranged by two major Chinese state-owned carriers. China Southern Airlines and China Eastern Airlines sent flight to ferry more than 2,700 Chinese tourists stranded in Bali after one of its volcanoes erupted. China Southern Airlines flew two planes from Guangzhou and Xinjiang, while China Eastern Airlines sent four from Beijing and Shanghai. We are very glad to be among the first batch of Chinese mainland citizens returning from Bali. To be honest, we feel quite proud to be Chinese while staying overseas. The Chinese embassy in Bali helped us manage the relevant procedures in order to fly back. China Southern said 1,297 passengers booked seats on its flights flying out of Bali between November 30 and December 7. China Eastern, on the other hand, has 1,480 reservations on outbound flights from Bali.
The International Ungura Rai Airport in Bali, which earlier closed due to the eruption of Mount Angung Volcano and later opened, is subject to further closures depending on the weather and the movement of the volcanic hash. While Chinese tourists have returned home, tourism business is being affected negatively as December is usually the peak season for all in Bali. But this time has seen deserted beaches, empty restaurants and hotels on the Indonesian island tourist resort, all because of the volcanic eruptions on Mount Agung. The Jimbaran beach used to be an ideal setting for tourists of fresh seafood at sunset. Most restaurants and grill bars target Chinese as well as Western tourists. But right now, what is left behind are just stacks of chairs and dinner tables on an empty beach sand. A popular halal restaurant is now emptied after most stranded tourists had left on chartered flights. This emptiness deals a heavy blow to this restaurant since its opening. We usually have 200 to 300 customers a day, sometimes even 400 a day. But today, we had just one customer, and the situation may continue till the end of December. According to figures available from the Chinese Consulate General in Bali, over 13,960 Chinese nationals have left the island tourist resort on chartered flight between November 29 and December 3rd. And what's more, three Chinese airlines have cancelled their December tourist flight to Bali from various Chinese cities. Though the absence of Chinese tourists have not affected the mood of local Indonesian holidaymakers, the stay away of the Chinese could impact greatly the Bali tourism industry. Local Bali tour operators have combined to accommodate a planned arrival of up to 1.2 million Chinese tourists and visits centering around the December-January season. But the latest bout of cancellation is sure to affect the tourism industry on the island this winter. And now to British airline EasyJet's plan to embrace electric jets. The interior of a typical EasyJet plane as passengers walk down the aisle. The pilots seated in the cockpit, ready for a takeoff. And the airline is also ready for another kind of takeoff as the British budget airline could be flying electric passenger jets on short haul routes within a decade in a push to cut plane pollution as it partners with Wright Electric. We have a small electric plane flying. Our goal is our first commercial plane in 10 years. EasyJet has been a wonderful partner, taking the time to teach us how an airplane like this will be used by the airline industry. For example, you might think that ultra-short flights are not a big portion of the market. Here's Paul to talk about these flights at EasyJet. Then EasyJet responds. The right electric plan is to build a, a single-aisle commercial plane which can carry around 180 passengers, so pretty much the same as our current, our Neo that is parked up next door, and a range of something like 335 miles or 542 kilometers. EasyJet said its support for electronic planes was part of a broader strategy to reduce carbon and nitrous oxide emissions in the aviation sector following the lead taken by the railway and automotive industries. What we want to do is, is to say to Wright Electric and to the industry as a whole, from an airline perspective and we think our passenger perspective, we think there'd be a real appetite. We certainly would love to fly an electric plane. We think our passengers who are increasingly telling us they want their carbon footprint, their environmental impact to be reduced. The airline is already targeting a 10% cut in emissions per passenger per kilometre by 2022, using more fuel-efficient jets such as the new Airbus A320neo. The airline has two and 98 are on order for delivery by August 2022. And it's time to wind down. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Ambukola Joe Oketumbi.